everyone, it's Skylar. And it's Tyler. And this is episode four of Bird Talk. Yeah, so um, in this episode, we have one guest, Dimple Ravuri. She is our teacher advisor. She was a former member of the team and she graduated in 2016. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Going good. Let's first start with, um, Just tell me. us a bit about yourself. Okay, how far back do you want me to go here? <laughs> Since I, I was on the team? Yeah, let's okay. start there. Sure. Yeah, we'll start. Um, So yeah, I joined the team my freshman year because my older brother, actually, he's two years older than me. Um, He was on the animation team back when we had an animation team um, with the bird brain. So um, I joined and I actually joined under the animation team just because I liked drawing at that point. I was really into art. So I used to like do the storyboards and things. And we used to be in the Energy Academy, that like little room between um, Mr. Lake's room and Mr. Kinney's room, which they're both retired now. So I don't know how much you know about them. So we used to be kind of hidden in there because the animation team was very small at that point. But I started branching out just because I love talking to people and no one in that room seemed to like talking to each other. So I started coming outside. And uh, at that time, it was the PR team, not the IR team. Uh, and I started to see, you know, what they were up to. So I started helping them with the different events they were playing. Planning. I used to volunteer at FLL and things like that. And then um, sophomore year, I met Danielle Caranco, who became, we were best friends basically since my sophomore year to senior year. And um, that's when things kind of really took off. So I applied that year for director of outreach. So I was doing all of that. And then um, I don't know, I just jumped right in. I was, you know, I, I never really hold back when I start doing new things. So uh, I wanted to be involved in with everything and in everything. So at that point, the COO at the time, so she was kind of in charge of all the awards so like chairmans and all the awards and things like that so I started helping her with all of that but um, she happened to be a senior that year and she was you know doing interviews with colleges on the east coast and stuff like that so uh, me and Danny really um, just you know stepped up and we started taking charge of things we started finding all these random crazy outreach events that our team could go to and that's when kind of the idea of the children's book also started forming that year. Um, so we actually were, if you look in the little um, author section, you'll see both of our names. So we actually worked on the script together. Then the novel script. Cool. Like the, yeah, like the text for the children's book together. And we then worked with another alumna who's uh, Jessica Estrada to help, you know, like bring the children's book to life. So we were doing all these crazy, insane things all the time. And, you know, we were keeping this, um, Mr. Neighbors and Mr. Lake after school really, really late. And I'm sure they did not enjoy that very much. But, you know, we were just, I don't know, we would stay super, super late every night. Um, I'd have breakdowns before the open house because that was the first year we like actually had an open house. That was, really? um, yeah. So before that, the open house was just in the Energy Academy in Mr. Lake's room. They just used to put up chairs and you'd just watch the PowerPoint or whatever. But that year we got the NPR and, you know, I I was like, okay, we need to like make all these crazy posters. We need to like set up a timeline for each of the weeks. Um, And then we like actually got round tables. We made centerpieces and everything like that. So that was the first year that open house actually happened. And then what else? Other chairman's binder. So before that, we apparently they made the chairman's binder pages on PowerPoint and they used to print them out and put them in little sleeves. Uh. Uh, And they were not very, yeah. Uh, exactly um so (laughs) yeah uh, I feel where you are right now Tyler that's definitely what my brain sounded like um back then (laughs) Uh, like were the pages horizontal it it was horizontal yeah yeah and it was like and the team (laughs) didn't have terrible yeah and our team didn't have any like colors like our team's colors yet because like our, the birds were pretty new relatively so we didn't have any like graphic design standards or anything so I sat down with my brother's best friend at the time who was like our graphic design leader uh, director that year and every single day I'd just be over his shoulder like a fly that wouldn't go away and like we developed essentially what the brand standards are now and obviously they've been refined very very well over time but you know that was kind of the start of hey let's put up an organized front you know and look professional and stick to the same colors that we usually do stick to a certain font and really I feel like I don't know I don't want to give myself too much credit but you can ask Mr. Lake but I think the team's vision became more clear at that point because you know we had started doing all these crazy things but you know that side of chairman's was really in view my sophomore year and we happened to win it that year for the first time that was the first time we won chairman so which is great felt amazing to be a part of the team that did that um so yeah that was my sophomore year and then my junior year again this was just me Danny just like you know going crazy and just you know pushing the team further and the SD side of the team too started you know becoming really really strong you know we were one of those um, seed one teams and yeah so people like Patrick Youssef people like um, Chandler Warren you know 
Juan Cortez. So all of these people, you know, it was just, it was really amazing now that I think about it, you know, like both the team, both the sides of the teams were in balance, you know, so. I guess I'm talking about the team a lot rather than myself. I hope that's okay, but no, that's I mean, the, I mean, this podcast is for <laughs> robotics, so <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so yeah, that was sophomore year, and it was kind of crazy. Like I was like, you know, and then at that point, I was like, dang, like for, robotics is, you know, it's this amazing program, and it truly actually changed my life. So forever grateful for that. And then, um, so yeah, that was sophomore year, and then junior year was even crazier because then I became like the head of IR, and we that that was I think the first year where we actually went from being like the just the technic technical side or like my sophomore year we were still the robot side and PR but the summer between my sophomore year and my scene my junior year which was between 2014 and 2015 that's when we rebranded ourselves the F side which was the foundation or the first program side and then the IR and ST side. So that's when that what grouping kind of came up was during those years because we really wanted to take the first name, like literally almost, right? We wanted to kind of break our team apart in terms of that. So my junior year, then I was in charge of the IR side of the team. So again, and then Danny again, even though she was a director at that time, like we really were just like, two peas in a pod like we would just be doing everything together all the time and then we also had the amazing luck of having some of the most amazing people that I still know um or I don't talk to them as much now but they were amazing you know the team back then so Kaylin Dower Sophie Brodish um so those names might sound a little bit more familiar because they're younger than me Mm -hmm. Sophie Brodish was CEO my freshman year yeah so they were just coming up and you know Kaylin Sophie they were amazing you know um so we really you know just threw the freshmen in that year because we realized like that's how we got so invested in robotics right when we were renaissance period (laughs) yeah and uh, exactly so we really just wanted them to you know like there was no official training or anything like that that we did we just threw people in we're like you want sponsors you here's a list of people on the chamber of commerce start calling them you know so we started doing all this crazy stuff and then so yeah and then that year we really really worked hard right we worked hard on our chairmans we worked on our presentation and that was the first year actually or 20 uh, my sophomore year was the first year where we actually had a presentation like where we had a plan for how we would present our chairmans in front of judges. Wait, um, really? we had... Wait that wasn't in what place did... before? No, yeah, what did you guys do before, before then? Because before they would present, but they didn't have like props. They didn't have like a story they would tell, you know, that connected the video, the essay yeah. and the um, presentation together. So those were for the first few years where that started happening. And the second year, we really took that to heart. And, you know, we would practice all the time. We would make sure the essay was really great. We would make sure the binder was really great. And everything actually was really great. So we did all of that. And then we got, we didn't win at CVR. Chairman's, we didn't win at CVR because we had won there the last year. So we were really feeling bummed out. Um, We got to Sacramento, which was the Davis Regional at the time. And I just remember thinking, I was like, okay, I am the head of IR this year. Like if I don't win, you know, that's a huge disappointment for myself if we don't win. And then the SD side was doing really good too, right? Because this was my junior year. This was 2015. Sacramento, um, the Robonauts, Team 118 was there at that competition. Team 1678 was there because it was their regional, the Davis Regional. And we were there. And we were the second highest ranked team before the seeds were picked and the Robonauts, which were team 118, they picked 1678. So we were the top three teams at that region. And it just so happened that they won because they had picked each other and we were in the finals. So you know how we all, uh, and you don't find out if you won chairman's or not until all the way at the end. Uh-huh. Right. So at that point we didn't know if we were going to champs. So, and then the we won chairman. Really built up. Yes. Yeah. It just really built up. And then we won chairman's and I just remember feeling this huge. Uh, and then, you know, the air changed. We were like, Oh my goodness. Like we're going to champs and our robot was really good. We were putting up the six stacks. This was recycle rush. Our robot oh, was yeah. good. And then, so yeah, we, we were feeling really good as a team that year. So we actually invited our principal to join us to the world champs that year in St. Louis. So she came with us. We get to world champs and we find out or I guess before we get to world champs we find out that 1678 team 118 and us were all in the same division okay wow so right I'm getting chills right now thinking about it I just got chills just retelling the story so we find out we're all in the same division and we were like oh my goodness this is crazy 
and our robot was having a little bit of difficulties so we weren't placing the highest as we weren't doing as well as we could have but we had a really good relationship right with those other two teams because again Patrick Youssef at that point was kind of like our strategy leader and our just like a he had a full view of the design process of the robot and everything like that so we were doing all of this and we get to when the teams start picking each other for the alliance and team 118 picks teams team 118 picks team 1678 and we're like oh my goodness and at that point we weren't seated very high right we weren't ranked very high so we're like oh my goodness there's no way we're going to get picked as the second as the first pick right just because there was all these teams that were in front of us and you know they go through the eight top seeds and then they're starting to make their way back and I don't know what happened then but we were left over and the three teams that were ranked the highest at the Davis Regional were all on the same alliance and we knew then that, you know, there's a very, very good chance that we're about to become world champs. And 5012 was also the um, third pick, by the way, and they were great. Um, and we all worked together very well. Being in the stands that year and just waiting for this course to come out one after one after the semifinals, after you go to Einstein, you know, you have to beat out all the other divisions there. And, you know, we won world champs and that was insane. That was like the craziest yeah. time week of my life it was so crazy um and I think that's when and you know we really tried to start building a relationship with the school um and you know making sure our robots are present at the rallies we were doing all these demonstrations and the school knew you know hey you have a robotics team on this campus but I think the that principal year, actually there at the yeah, at world that, oh yeah, man yeah that was like one <laughs> that's that a good crazy. competition dude I know invite. that was like one of the yeah that was one of the first times I think the principal actually went to a world champ oh tournament man what too. a first competition in, like like no. and um, yeah miss Ulrich she's she was amazing too and then we came back and things changed you know we got called to all these radio shows you know they did a documentary on us that um the Robo League documentary oh yeah and yeah so that was when I was yeah so that was my junior year and then senior year you know we you know we obviously didn't give up right we started doing bigger things better things you know we wanted to make sure that the legacy of whatever happened that previous year didn't go to waste. So, you know, we wanted to branch out and we started, you know, and I've left out so many things, by the way, in the past three years that, yeah, I can't even imagine all the different things that we were doing. So, well, anyway, robotics kind of changed me. And 2016, my senior year was when Mr. Austin um, came to Alta Sierra and he was a teacher there for the first year. And he became a uh, coach to us along with Mr. Lake, my senior year. And um, he was a teacher and he had gone to UCI to get his teaching credential. And um, he was a really good mentor. And I realized then that I think that I like, you know, being in charge of a group of people, because that's what I was doing on robotics. Um, I like working towards a certain goal, you know, um, and I like, you know, I like being the leader in a room. And I like, you know, making sure that everyone's working together well. And I think being a teacher just kind of stuck with me in that, you know, through that and hearing about this program from Mr. Austin, I really wanted to go down that path. So I actually ended up going to the same exact college as Mr. Austin, which is UC Irvine. And we did the same exact teacher credentialing program, which is what allowed me to get my teaching credential and my degree in bio together at the same time so that's why I'm here four years later because usually it would take like five or five and a half years to become a teacher after you graduate high school so yeah and now I'm here back on with this team and you guys have grown to this amazing amazing thing and I'm just so happy to be back with a new group of children <laughs> it feels weird to call you guys kids because I still feel like I want team but mm-hmm. but yeah especially with a, such an emotional connection yeah <laughs> it is it, it felt really weird being back and with Mr. Lake retiring too I feel like I just I felt very scared at the beginning because I was like what am I signing up for here I, like obviously I know how the team is running and everything like that but being the adult is definitely different than when you're just a leader that's helping the adults yeah. um so and it's you know and neighbors I can't believe I didn't mention him that much at all in my long spiel that I went on neighbors was there all four years that I was there and you know he's neighbors he hasn't changed one bit <laughs> as much as I want to say he's grown up and, um, he has but yeah. Um, you know, he's just, yeah, he's a, he's great, you know, for every kid that comes through the SD side, you know, as much as it might not seem like it, I feel like he still cares obviously about this team and he's stuck with us um, this whole time. So um, yeah. he's great. And I'm glad to be working with him right now and leading you guys. So when you like, were like signing up to be the teacher advisor for us now, obviously I doubt you expected to become the teacher advisor the year we're stuck in a major pandemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, what has that been like? Has it? Um, Yeah, it's been really sad because I think some of my most fun memories of robotics are, you know, just working together in a shop with like-minded people just being around you. And it was kind of, it is as much as we don't like saying it probably as explicitly, it is a safe haven for a lot of people, right? You want. Yeah. to 
um, you know, have these conversations with your friends and robotics being so hands-on both on the ST side and the IR side where you need to be, you know, you have this kind of hive mind when you're sitting next to each other and, you know, working in a room, even if it's on the same essay, same, yeah, a lot of teamwork. And it's just been really sad, I guess, in that sense. Um, And, you know, I'm a very, I'm very much of a people person and I like meeting people face to face. Um, So that's been a little bit difficult um, that I haven't gotten to know everybody on the team this quickly. And I love competition and I, you know, we can't do that either this year. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just, it's weird because I've, I have a lot of respect for you guys. I think uh, more so than I would have if I had seen you in person, just because I've seen how much you guys persevere, even though it's not the normal circumstances, right? And it's insane that there's a group of high school children that are, you know, normally you're kind of, if you're in person, you're kind of have these goals, you know, on a whiteboard and you're, you know, working towards these things. But the fact that you guys all have this intrinsic motivation to keep working so hard and you know, starting this podcast this year or restarting it um, and keep doing all these things is actually really amazing. And that's been really cool for me to see, I think. Um, and it's definitely given me a new perspective in terms of that. It's 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 been rough, but I'm kind of glad it happened because I think it gave us a little bit of a jerk, you know, and, you know, made us- Gave us a bit of a new perspective and new- Yeah, story. exactly. Yeah, like, cause, you know, in our perspective, you know, it's just like, all right, we're adapting just keep working it's uh, it's hard to think about what it would look like from a third person perspective because yeah <laughs> that's why I wanted to do this goodie bag pickup and I wanted to like write you guys all these thank you notes because it's like and you don't think about it like you said right when you're the student it's mm-hmm. just another thing that happened to you but um, a lot of people out there adults don't st- have lost some of that interesting in- intrinsic motivation to keep going and the fact that you guys have developed these skills to be able to adapt to this new environment that you were put in randomly and, you know, crazily is you need to pat yourself on the back. You got to do it. Yeah. Thanks, Kyla, for doing it. <laughs> I appreciate it. I have questions for you guys. Oh, wow. How is it? Okay. Yeah. I want right. to ask you kind of, cause Kyla, you're a freshman and Skylar, are you a junior or so- you're I'm what? A senior. No way. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah I didn't know this. You, like you don't freshman and a half. Cause I yeah, was I, I, already I know, on the team and I was yeah. working with. Yeah. No, yeah. I think I remember meeting you the summer before. I think I remember meeting you in July when we were helping Mr. Lake pack up things in 501 and bring them to my classroom. I remember your mom like pointing me out to you uh, or something, but I remember meeting you and I was like, okay, I think he's been on the FTC team or something. And he's just gotten a head start in joining. Cause I know you had an older brother that went through the team too, right? Yeah. 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 Aaron was on the Aaron. Oh, okay. There we go. But yeah. Well, question. I'm... Yeah. So how's names. it been? How's it been for you? <laughs> I guess, experiencing Tyler for robotics, I guess, high school robotics for the first time in a pandemic and Skylar, your last senior year. Well, the, um, like, as you know, I went, I kind of went through part of the experience. I was actually like working alongside in the special program subgroup and that's (laughs) where I came back. But yeah, it's, um, so the thing is about being an FTC, it like, it prepares you a lot more for this compared to like, FLL Mm -hmm. because you know FLL it's like okay here's a little project build a small robot it'll take yeah here's some Legos it'll (laughs) it'll take like a couple of weeks to build your robot and then like and then FTC it's um you know now you're actually working with things you're competing against high schoolers and like people who have been working for years and like (laughs) and the um the competition experience it's actually more fast paced than uh frc mm-hmm. like oh, really? because, because, because at competitions season? no at competitions they have two fields and when one is done the other one immediately starts oh, so like scouting you have no time for break yeah. you have to run from one side to another also mm-hmm. you can only have 15 members oh which is, yeah that's a yeah. that's like I don't that's a very very small part of the yeah yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, yeah but um that it was a great like like it allows you to transition so much better I think it's uh I think it's just a great experience this definitely wasn't how I was expecting my senior year to go mm-hmm. for robotics or just overall you know because I don't like for school too I don't I'm don't gonna because like the pandemic started at the end of my junior year so like I will never have gotten to go to prom or anything most likely and things so it's like mm-hmm. kind of it it's not very, you know, fun. It's not how I wanted things to go. And then for robotics, yeah. I, I'm just lucky enough to have been able to go to worlds at some point during my time on robotics, you know, cause like 
-hmm. there are some members who will never have had that chance. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it definitely stinks because I was definitely going in, you know, I kind of, I was hoping my senior year, I'd go to like all the senior stuff at first school. And then I'd go to, I get to go to worlds or at least competitions again. Cause mm -hmm. like competition, like you said, said competition is like one of my favorite parts too. Mm -hmm. And of course the, the team aspect, I, before I was on robotics, I did cheer. And the thing I really loved about cheer was second, the competition, but most of all was the the team aspect. But that's one of the reasons. So when I started getting to, into robotics more and transitioned from cheer to robotics, mm -hmm. robotics was even more like a family than cheer ever was. And I just, it's kind of, it's sad not to get to be with everybody, but it is very cool to get kind of a different perspective on things mm -hmm. um, like you were talking about and to get to like, just adapting it's been a lot of adapting mm -hmm. it's been it's been very interesting but i am yeah. thankful that we live in a time that has like zoom and mm -hmm. electronics and ways to still stay in touch with people you know yeah definitely yeah i think it shows a lot of um, a lot more emotional maturity on your part you guys than you give yourselves credit for so i've just been amazed from my end at least do you have any other questions for us or Ooh, um i didn't we come prepared for questions. questions for you are we doing a little um host and guest switcheroo over here um let's see here are you guys marvel fans <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Mr. Austin and I just watched the new uh, the the WandaVision episode in my classroom. We try to do that every Friday because it comes out on Friday. <laughs> oh, oh, we haven't seen the newest episode yet. Oh, uh, yeah. I won't I spoil know. it. For, I just watched it before I hopped on here. <laughs> no. Good. Yeah. yeah, I love Marvel. I have, I have a question. Then, mm -hmm. do you guys think Marvel is better or DC? Oh, that's not even a question, Skylar. What are you talking about? <laughs> Fun fact about Marvel, by the way. So when I was a freshman on the team, they, uh, the first Avengers movie that ever came out, they did like a re-release of it in 2012, which I think was my freshman year. And the robotics team, we actually partnered with the Clovis North robotics team and we bought out an entire theater. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Now, uh, during COVID, some movie theaters like allow you to buy out a whole theater for like a hundred bucks and it's just absurdly cheap that's crazy um one thing that we asked anika when we interviewed anika last week our team ceo was mm -hmm. what like her favorite or like funniest memory memory was from the team so oh, yes <laughs> what is one of your i mean obviously you've told us a lot about your experience on the team but like yeah. what's like a something whenever people ask you about robotics or your time on the team like you always it's a memory that just stands out you always makes you laugh or smile or whatever it may be makes me besides laugh. besides the ones you've already said yeah i mean oh uh, they have to pick one <laughs> i mean you could talk about a few if you want yeah, i'll talk about a few okay so first one that kind of, kind of I, it's just like a bunch of late nights merged together at the shop where we're all so tired because you know we're all juniors and seniors and taking all these crazy ap classes yeah and we're just being super tired and the smallest thing would just like set us off and we would just kind of burst into this like giggles and everything like that and it's just yeah that one comes to mind this one's not really funny it's kind of sad but so that first open house that I was talking to you about yeah uh, I like that thing was my baby right so um as I was planning it and you know we had planned to just uh, demonstrate the robot on like the stage thing in the NPR but mm -hmm. for some reason someone found the ugliest carpet I had ever ever seen in my entire life it was like this ugly gray carpet and it had all these rips in it and they decided to cover it up with like pink duct tape and like lime green duct oh, tape no. oh no got and, that like, cosmo and wanda carpet <laughs> exactly so anyway so they decided to like the npr was looking beautiful the centerpieces were looking beautiful and we had all these amazing posters down and like it was all this like pretty colors you know the like charcoal gray the red white blue and then you just see this ugly carpet I remember on Saturday morning because we had it on Saturdays the open house I remember walking in there because the night before we were awake until like 2 a.m you know setting everything up walking yeah. in seeing that and just burst into tears I just remember crying I was like what did you guys do and then Mr. Lake had to like pull me aside and like have a whole conversation about not freaking out over things and they got rid of the carpet thank god but I don't know it's just really funny to me because I just remember Mr. Lake like <laughs> like talking about how much I freaked out and he still remembers that he still makes fun of me for it but yep no I probably would have been right there with you if I saw lime pink and lime green yeah. and like a bright pink it was not fun oh man not fun especially at after like yeah that always stinks when some when like you work really hard to plan something and then something happens that's like you couldn't control and it's yeah. just like oh mm -hmm. 
Okay, uh, yeah, just one more question, just quickly. Uh, another thing we asked Anika. Yeah, another thing we asked Anika. Uh, what's your favorite bird? What's my favorite bird? Oh my god, I have so many. So my friend has been like snubbing me in weird ways that he's just gonna ship a bird to my house. Um, I have so many saved pictures of birds. Oh my goodness, I have to pick one. Um, well, I like the kingfisher. I don't know if you guys know what that is. What's up? Oh, our <laughs> big <bird. laughs> <laughs> you, I'm a true science teacher, you guys. I'm a true yeah. science teacher. Yeah, yeah now we know your bird. favorite actual bird too. <laughs> yeah, the kingfisher. Yeah, the kingfisher's so cool. I love that bird. But um, one of our when did that become a part of our team? Ah, it's crazy. I actually, <laughs> I actually uh, whatever. Um, I think I commented this on one of our Instagram posts recently. It's actually Randy, who's a um, character. Randy, oh, one of the originals. He, yeah, he's a reoccurring character in our um, or like in our original animated. He's in our children's book, yeah. Yeah, he is in our children's book, and he's actually in. Um, he first made an appearance in our animated shorts back when um, the birds became a thing, and he's voiced by Mr. Lake in the book. Uh, I mean, yeah. in the animated shorts. Um, so he's great. He's my favorite. You should watch those old videos. Um, so go check him out on our YouTube channel. There's a plug right there, um, along with the last three episodes of <laughs> um, this podcast. But yeah, I love Randy. Randy's just, um, yeah, he's great. I love Randy. <laughs> now it's time for our sponsor shout out. This one. Thank you, Dimple, for really joining short. us too. Yeah, yeah thank yes. you. It was great being here. Thanks, guys. So um, our last, uh, or second to last section, just quick sponsor shout out for uh bulldog village they have been they are one of our oldest sponsors and they have been with us for 10 plus years and then they've been just loyal donors and supporters for the bird brains and if you would uh if you'd like to sponsor us or know someone who would contact us at contact at team 1671.com um okay so now moving on to the nest news portion of the podcast um Okay, so what is IRST doing? IR and ST, they're basically doing what they've been doing. Um, ST is actually, we're finally able to do some, start doing in-person meetings again. So we've had our ST pods, they've been meeting and they're starting to just get back into the swing of things and uh, work on like organizing the shop and basically just getting used to in-person meetings again. And IR is continuing work on chairman stuff and also finance is finishing and well, the communications and development subgroup is finishing the business plan and everything and working on sponsor stuff. So that's what's going on on the team right now. Yeah. And um, Daphne is still selling masks. You can contact her through uh, Slack and masks yeah. are $5 each. Mm-hmm. And uh, just a reminder, the booster meeting is coming up on the 18th from 6.30 to 7.30. If you would, if you, your parent would like to go to that, then have them join the, or you can join and then pass on the information to them. If you're a student, join the booster channel for Slack. That's it. That's all we, yeah, that's all we have. All right. So thank I guess you. this is... Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, this thank has you. Been, uh, that, really good. You've done yeah. a lot for the team, man. Yeah. <laughs> it was a walk down memory lane for me. Pioneer. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, sure. that's Skyline Tower. Signing, Signing off.